What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and it's the end of 2019, you know, as we roll into 2020, there's no new products out right now, that's all gonna come. So for the last few days of the year, we're gonna take it easy, and uh, do a little Q&A for you guys, lots of questions about the PC, personal life, the channel, all that stuff, so I figured, you know, just for a, a quick and easy video, we'll go sort of like vlog style for this as well. I wanna test out my new camera, the, uh, the EOS R, so I figured, you know, no better way to test it than to just get right into it and do some vlogging with it. So, a little Q&A. Now this is exclusively from Discord. A few weeks ago I asked people on the Random Frank P Discord channel to ask me some questions. Uh, so if you want, you can join the actual Discord with the link down below. But first up from Kiwi Aviation. Cool name. Uh, what piece of tech do you think is most worth it for the money? And that's definitely a good question. Because, you know, I do cool tech under 50, so I get a lot of pretty cool budget gadgets in here for under 50 bucks. And there's some pretty great stuff. But the one thing that comes to mind for me, and I think it's like the number one recommendation, is probably a pair of headphones that you've definitely seen before. All right, and I think after thinking about it for a bit off cam and stuff, I think the best bang for your buck in terms of a tech product are the Philips SHP 9500. These are open back headphones and they sound incredible for the price. Now, let me just check the price real quick because they've gone up and down the past few months or so. Okay, $66. I, I bought these a few years ago when they launched, I believe for around like 90 bucks it was. Um, these are becoming more popular now because they've been like getting resurfaced in some tech videos and stuff. I bought these on Black Friday, like my second pair, for I believe they were $55 on Black Friday. But even now, 66 bucks on Amazon Prime, free one day shipping is insane. So I've used and obviously tested lots of different headphones, headsets, and I've always gravitated more towards open back headphones because my pretty much my main pair had been the uh, 58X Jubilee or the HD6XX headphones from Sennheiser because you know they're open back they sound incredible these are I believe 150 to 200 but for $66 it is an absolute amazing deal like if if I was just had to ask what would you recommend for you know under 100 bucks any tech product any category, any genre. I think I would go with these because they sound so good. They sound better than most headphones I've tried at 150 to 250. And they are what, like a fourth of the price? They sound great, open back, extremely lightweight, extremely comfortable. And you just really can't go wrong with these. Um, I'll put a link for you down below, but yeah, love them. All right, so next up, Ducky asked, what's your mouse pad with the lines? This has been a crazy, popular question, okay? And I've showed it off in a lot of videos, but I get that, you know, some people may miss those videos or overlook it, but uh, Novel Keys and I collaborated on a random Frank P and Novel Keys topographic mouse pad. It's extended, as you can see, a nice cloth mouse pad with this topographic design. So this is only available for a few more days. You're probably gonna see this Saturday. Uh, so this mouse pad is already in the extension pre-order and you can get this until December 31st. So if you wanna pick up a nice extended cloth mouse pad with the cool topographic design and a little Easter egg, you can see my logo right here kinda designed into it so it's nice and subtle. If you wanna pick this up, you got a few more days. The initial 100 batch sold out instantly. So it's the extension pre-order batch. Hop on that while you can. All right, so I figured in order to test out the camera and take it pretty chill for the Q&A video, I have to run out for a minute and then we'll answer the rest as we get back and as the day goes. <coughs> you okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so it's, you know, after the holidays and stuff, obviously everyone eats like crap at the holidays. If not, I don't want to hear about it because I definitely overate and enjoyed every single second of it. Uh, but I also feel like death because that's just part of the process. So I'm at this local juice place. Thankfully, just discovered it recently. It's like four miles from my house. So I'm going to get a nice green juice in me. Maybe like a minor detox situation going on. And then uh, we'll, we'll chat for a bit. 
All right, so, uh, got a nice green smoothie. And while I was in there, saw this massive cookie, which is kind of like, you know, not what I wanted to do, because I wanted to get this to be healthy, but then I saw this and I was like, sign me up. Uh, but it's like a vegan cookie. So, you know, if I can cut back on any sort of the, the calories and stuff, uh, I'm, all, I'm all for it. And they also have these massive whoopie pies. Uh, they got this for my wife though, because she wanted one. And let's I want to test this out real quick before we dive into some of the questions. Because if this is good, then I am gonna be all about some massive vegan cookies. They had a tons of just good looking food in there. Massive sticky buns. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. Not bad flavor. It tastes like a regular cookie. You can't tell it's vegan at all. Just a little bit too hard for me. I like a nice, soft, moist cookie, you know what I'm saying? All right, so Discord questions, yes. Our first one we have from Brando. Brando66770 asking, what is your favorite video you've made? Probably been asked, but I'm curious. Um. So my favorite types of videos to make, like I can't think of one in particular, but I always like doing things that's not necessarily just a review. You know, re reviews, they get repetitive. It's the same process, the same format of what I usually do. So I like videos that are kind of outside the box. And the first ones that come to mind to me uh, from, I'll just go this past year, uh, was the ultimate land setup video where I built just this very tiny compact Century 2.0 PC and I had like everything just inside of a drawstring bag. That video was very fun to make, took a while. Uh, the custom $680 grid 600 keyboard, that was a great video to make because again, it's just different stuff. It's not like a review, it's stepping outside of the box and it's like a process video. Everything you guys see from start to finish. That was a really fun one to make. Uh, just recently, the building the Xbox Series X as a PC. That was a fun build. Um, although like nobody in the comments like used their brain for that video. Like that video got a lot of hate. I don't get it. People would be like, uh, this isn't an Xbox. This is a PC. And I'm like, yeah, did you read the, the title? Like, did you listen to the intro? Did you, were you alive for this video? Or did you just go unconscious and leave a stupid comment? But those videos are definitely some of my three recent ones I can remember that were really fun to make. There's probably more that I'm just not thinking of right now, but again, reviews. That's what my channel is based on, but they're not my favorite thing. I just like doing things that are a bit outside of the box, that have a clear start to finish you guys can see, and in the end we have a really cool result, which is why those PC videos are fun to make, where the custom DIY stuff, like the mouse mods video was fun, uh, the custom keyboard stuff, all that stuff I really, really dig. So I'm also testing out the, uh, the EOS R for vlogging, and it is worlds different than the a7 III, which is good. That's why I wanted to switch, but it's also like a bigger camera. Uh, well, mainly the lens is big, but there's just not a lot of place to mount a camera in a car. <laughs> so I literally had this thing like six, in maybe a little bit more, maybe like 10 inches in front of my face. Um, so next question, I'm just trying to find a, a, a place to mount this instead of on my steering wheel so it doesn't fall off and break. Bartholomew asked, how long are your work days on average? That's a pretty good question because I feel like people see a video and they think like, oh, this is a seven minute video. This took him seven minutes to make, you know, like that kind of mindset. It's, people do not realize how much work goes into an average video or an average work day. So I would say on average, probably between eight to 10 hours a day I'll work. Um, five to six days a week. I usually take Sundays and Mondays off. Sometimes I'll still work sun, uh, Mondays, but usually Sundays and Mondays are my off days, if you will. Um, I'll usually get up, so my wife gets up for work at 4.30 in the morning, and when she gets up, like, I'm awake, kind of, you know, like, I'm still asleep, but I'm, you know, my, my body's waking up, because I hear her get up and stuff. So on an average work day, I'll probably get up around 8.30. Days that I am gonna be very productive, I'll get up at like, 6.30 and work until she gets home, which is 7.30. She works, you know, 12 hour work days 
and the days I need to get videos done, pump videos out, days I'm behind, I will also do that same schedule. It's easier that way. Uh, so I would say anywhere between eight to 10 hours a day for five to six days a week. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into the channel that you guys don't maybe see or understand, but it's, it's tough to maintain a channel with 1.3 million subscribers as a one-man crew. You know, it's just me. I don't have a team working for me. I don't have a whole production crew. Everything from start to finish is me. <laughs> All right, so we just got home now, and I said before I got that whoopie pie from my wife. Probably can't see her if she's in the back eating it. Which relates directly to my next question from Sam, who asked, how's your wife? Which is kind of an odd question, because this Q&A is from December 12th. And for those of you who don't know, my wife is pregnant. Uh, she announced that on her like Instagram and Twitter and stuff on Thanksgiving. So those of you who are following her, you probably knew that back then. I didn't announce it until Christmas Day. So this question from two weeks ago asked, how's your wife? I don't know if that was him being like, you know, it's like stupid, like, oh, how's your wife? Or what, but yes, my wife is very good. She's enjoying that whoopie pie, right? You like it? Is that your first whoopie pie? Yeah, she, she's never had one before. And uh, yes, we are expecting a baby boy, May 2020. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so back in the studio now, and it's time for me to address one of the more common questions that I've seen ever since I built the new PC behind me, the new PC for the channel. And uh, let's just get into this from Goopy. What a name, Goopy. Why make an Intel build when a lot of people see Ryzen giving more bang for your buck? And that is 100% true. So last month, well, I guess, yeah, a little over a month ago at this point, um, I built my new PC with the i9-9900KS. That was brand new at the time. I built that a week before I uploaded it. And then, I believe it was the day right before I uploaded it, AMD killed the game. They announced a 3950X, 3960X, a 3970X. And they are absolutely killing the CPU game. They, they absolutely destroy the i9. 9900KS that I built my PC with. So, I understand that everyone's like, Random Frank P, why did you just build this brand new PC when these better CPUs were announced? Well, A, I didn't build the PC all in one day and then upload it. It's just unfortunate timing. I built that a week before I uploaded it to the channel. That's how you know it works a lot of the times. And then of course, it just happened to work out where a day before it got uploaded, AMD announced all these killer CPUs that put the i9-9900KS to shame. So yeah, I probably will be upgrading. I would love to because for what I do, you know, content creation, always, you know, rendering videos, video editing, and even gaming, the new CPUs are definitely more suited for me. So as soon as they become more available, because they've been sold out and just like, you can't find them anywhere, I will probably be updating or upgrading my PC with the new uh, Ryzen CPUs, or the, maybe the Fair Dipper one, I don't know. But yes, I understand there's a lot of concern. It was just bad timing. <laughs> I didn't see those AMD CPUs and be like, oh, I'm gonna use the worst version of Intel's. And that just, it happened to work out that way. But good question, Goopy, you're one of many asking. And then kind of going right along with that, uh, Wigget asked, how is the coat on your graphics card doing? Has it peeled or? Maybe he means has it peeled off? Let's take a look. All right, so what I did to customize my GPU to make it, you know, fit more to the overall like white and silver aesthetic was I spray painted it with Plasti Dip, which is essentially this very, very thin rubber coating, kind of, kind of like the thickness of a balloon maybe. And it's it works like spray paint, but it's just a thin rubber coating. Doesn't, it's not permanent, it doesn't affect it at all. So I did that again to make it fit in. Cause as you can see, we can't really see now in the vlog style, but it looks a lot better than just the black version for this build. However, a few weeks ago, of course, uh, Asus went along and made their very own white version of the 2080 Ti Strix. Like, of course they would do that, right? They did it right after I asked them if there were any white GPUs available. They said, no. So that's why I spray painted mine. I would have waited if I knew that just a few weeks later they were gonna release a white one. All white shroud, all white backplate, 
I think it's like a silver back plate. All white fans. It looks so much better than this janky spray painted job that I did, even though like it looks fine just looking at it, you know, through the glass panel. But it's like, come on. So whenever that's available in the US market, because they said it's not available in the US market yet, but I've seen tech YouTubers in the US have them. Uh, if I could get my hands on it, that would be great. Because it's not only a bit faster, I believe it's a bit more powerful as well. I believe the core clock speed's a little bit higher than the sock ones on the 2080 Ti uh, from Asus. So, yeah, the, the card's fine. I would just maybe like to possibly upgrade to the official white version. <laughs> then lastly, as we wrap it up here, Jake asked, what is your favorite game of 2019? That's definitely a pretty good question as well, because there was a lot of games that came out this year I didn't, this is probably the year that I've played games the least, unfortunately. Most of the time I'm gaming, it's for a video, like for testing a mouse or a keyboard or a headset or something. When I'm gaming, I'm usually testing a product for a video. I haven't had a lot of time to just relax and game, you know? Um, so I think out of the ones I played the most, like I played probably Battlefield 5 the most this year. That didn't come out this year, that came out in 2018. One game in particular that sticks out to me is Session. I've talked about it on this channel. Actually, no, I haven't talked about it on this channel, but I've played it. So a lot of the B-roll and stuff, you see me playing that skateboarding game, that's Session. And it's currently still, I believe in Alpha, I wanna say. Um, and it's just a very, very good, realistic, skate alternative you know we want skate 4 ea give us skate 4 but then these other games come along like session where it just completely captures that feel that skate had but it's more realistic you know each stick is your foot so it's i don't know it, it's tough to explain but i've always loved skateboarding games and this one just feels very realistic very natural and the modding community for it is amazing there are probably close to a hundred modded maps. People have just made their own maps and put out custom decks, hoodies, shoes to wear in game. And they recently just updated it and put out a brand new uh, like level like in a parking garage, which is really cool. But yeah, I'd probably say session. Other than that, I really enjoy the story mode for Modern Warfare. I know that sounds kind of stupid, but the story mode is actually really, really good in Modern Warfare. I haven't played much this year. So I guess I'd have to go with Session for my best of 20, 2019. So all right guys, that'll wrap it up for this end of 2019 Q&A. Hope you enjoyed, and again, just a, some, a minor content filler, if you will. There's no new tech products coming out within this week or the next few weeks. After CES, then we'll see a lot more things, but for a hectic end of the year with all the tech videos we got rolled out, top five this, top five that, I figured after the holidays, I'm gonna take it easy and chill to 2020. So hope you guys enjoyed this little video. We have Room Tour Project coming up tomorrow. And then next week for Room Tour Project episode 200, we have a very, very special guest. It's gonna be uh, pretty cool if that all works out. So yeah, that'll wrap it up guys. Hope you enjoyed, hope you had a great 2019. Hope you have an even better 2020. See you in the next one.